G'day beautiful people, it's Stuart Stone here from healthandfitnessover40.com and the reason you're seeing a photo of me instead of my happy smiling face is because we're in the office because we're going to go through some research today. Now don't worry it's not going to be dry and boring, it's going to be uplifting and enlightening but um, and I'm going to make it as, as quick and simple as we can for you. But the reason for this video is because I've been asked these questions and these questions are in the media a lot and here they are. Here's the big three. Stuart, what are the most toxic chemicals that we're exposed to in our diets and in our food? And also, what problems can they cause? Can they cause cancer? Can they cause other diseases? And how can I reduce my exposure to them? So that's the purpose of today's video and the video's title, Cancer Causing Chemicals in Our Food and What We Can Do About Them. So let's get started. Okay, so each of the slides, each of the web pages that I that I link to here, the description is either on the screen here, so near where my pencil marker is right now, but they're also all the links are included in the description below. So if you want to read these articles for yourself, go for it. Click on the link in the description below. But for now, we're going to stick to the areas that are underlined. So dioxins and furans, the most toxic chemicals known to science. So what is a dioxin? There are, it's a general term that describes a group of hundreds of chemicals that are highly persistent in the environment. Uh, dioxin is formed as an unintentional byproduct of many industrial processes involving chlorine, such as waste incineration, chemical and pesticide manufacturing, and pulp and paper ble bleaching. So in other words, in the Western world, if you live in or near a city of any size, you're going to be exposed to dioxins. And if you've seen those industrial incinerators, they're pumping out dioxins every day, plus pesticide manufacture, pesticide use is going to release dioxins into the environment and ultimately into the food chain, as is paper bleaching. And as it says lower down, of course, even doing backyard burning, we, um, we're exposed to these chemicals. So there's a message there. You want to limit your exposure, A, get out in the country if that's realistic, but then if you're putting pesticides anywhere near your foods, even organic, um, or if you're doing any of your own waste paper burning, well, you're going to be exposing yourself to these chemicals. So anyway, let's see what the World Health Organization has to say about dioxins and their effects on human health. So dioxins, they accumulate in the food chain, mainly in the fatty tissues of animals. There's our first clue as to A, where we get them, and B, how to reduce our exposure to them. So more than 90% of human exposure is through food, mainly meat and dairy products, fish and shellfish. So there's a big hint. So it's in the fatty tissues of animals, and it's in animal products, primarily meat, dairy, fish and shellfish. Now what do dioxins do? They damage the immune system, they interfere with hormones, and they also are uh, chemicals that cause cancer. So there's the answer to our first questions. What are the most top toxic chemicals? What are the most toxic chemicals we're exposed to in our diets and what problems can they cause? So let's look further into the research. So dioxins and human toxicity. They're known human carcinogens. What else can they do? They can cause atherosclerosis, hypertension and diabetes. So atherosclerosis if you're not familiar with the term, it's a posh way of saying pretty much rust on the inside of our blood vessels. In other words, these are fibrous and fatty plaques that build up on the inside of our blood vessels, which basically cut down the blood supply to whatever that, that blood vessel is leading to. So in other words, if it's cutting down or reducing the blood supply to the brain, we start to have problems like dementia. So dementia being the fastest growing condition of aging in the Western world, this is something that can promote or contribute to the onset of dementia. You have an extreme situation where a blood vessel to the brain is blocked, that's when you're looking at stroke. Similarly, if you're blocking the, um, the blood vessels around the heart, well then you're raising the risk and the cause of heart attack. And guys, I love to talk to guys about this one, the blood vessels to your favourite friend, in other words, to your penis. 
those blood vessels are very tiny. So if you're getting atherosclerotic plaques building up in those blood vessels, guess what, guys? That's a contributing factor to erectile dysfunction. So you want to keep your wood good? Well, guess what? You want to limit atherosclerosis to that lovely organ who is your best friend. So we're going to talk about how you're going to do that shortly. So atherosclerosis, blockages to the blood vessels. Hypertension, another fancy word that means high blood pressure. Why? Because when you cut down the, the size of the blood vessel, the heart has to work harder and pump more vigorously or more powerfully to get the blood through to the organs. So therefore, that raises the pressure in the tube, rises, raises blood pressure. And then diabetes, we know, is the body's inability to metabolize sugar effectively. So who is the most sensitive population? The most sensitive population to dioxin exposure Exposure are the unborn babies, babies, in other words, fetuses, and newborn babies, infants. Why? Because these are developing human beings who are going through massive cell reproduction and massive cell turnover, so their bodies are more susceptible to absorbing these chemicals through the cell division process. So here's a, a message to nursing mothers and pregnant women. If you've got a high exposure to dioxins, guess what? Your baby has a high exposure as well. So there's a bit of food for thought. And again, they reiterate in this article that dioxins are among the most toxic chemicals known to man. So let's look at the piece of research here that talks about what foods are the worst offenders. So endocrine disruptor chemicals in various food sources. Endocrine disruptor chemicals, these are chemicals that mess with your hormones. Can't put it any plainer than that. Now, when we look over to the right here, they've broken those chemicals down into different groups. In other words, dioxins, which we're, is our primary focus here, di dibenzofurans, and coplanar and monoortho PCBs, which are plastic derived chemicals. So, those as a group make up the primary toxic chemicals in our food chain. And when we look to the middle there, freshwater fish are top of the list. And logic kind of dis dictates when we have chemical runoff from pesticides, for example, into our rivers and lakes. Freshwater fish are going to be exposed to that. They are in that water. Those chemicals get absorbed into their tissues. And then when we eat those fish, our levels go up massively. Then we look at dairy milk. It has a fairly, you know, it has a relatively, relatively low level of exposure. But then when we look at dairy products, in other words, ice cream, cheese and butter, which are concentrated forms of dairy with a higher fat content, guess what? The exposure to those chemicals goes up significantly. So let's go from left to right. So beef, chicken, pork and ocean fish all fall in a fairly similar level of exposure. Then when we look at things like hot dogs, bologna, devon, those sort of processed meats, the level goes up. Why? Because these are the fatty, crappy, low quality parts of the animal that you wouldn't normally eat if you could see it. So what happens is they take the ears, the eyes, the crappy bits, the tendons, the fatty meat that is, is not a good cut quality of meat, and they take that stuff and they grind it up. So that lower quality of meat, that higher fat content of meat, it's going to have a higher concentration of those chemicals. Why? Because if we go back again to slide number two, it says that these chemicals accumulate in the food chain, mainly in the fatty tissue of animals. So as we go across, like we said, we've done freshwater fish, butter, cheese, milk, ice cream, eggs. I guess they're derived from chicken. So again, the chicken is passing on its exposure to these chemicals into its unfertilized eggs, so into its unfertilized fetus. So it's not just in humans that these chemicals get passed onto, onto our progeny, but also in other animals. So eggs have a high exposure. Human milk on the far right, a high level. Again, because if the mother is exposed, guess what? That's going to be passed on to the baby. So human milk and ice cream, pretty much the same level. But the obvious one and the big blue arrow is our biggest clue to question three, which we had was how can I reduce my exposure to these cancer causing chemicals and these disease causing chemicals? It's a vegan diet. In other words, a vegan diet by definition 
is no animal products. So here's the obvious answer straight off the bat. If you limit and reduce and eliminate your exposure to animal products, you're going to reduce and eliminate your exposure to these harmful chemicals. So from a population study, prior to 2000, the Okinawans of Japan were the longest live, lived population of people on the planet, and their diet was primarily plant-based. On average, they consumed less than 21 grams of animal protein a day. When you look at the average Westerner, we're consuming in excess of 120 grams of animal protein a day if you're a woman, and for men it's usually in excess of 150. So if you're a regular meat, dairy, eggs eater, guess what? Your levels are going to be through the roof. And those, those populations, so like I said, the Okinawans, 21 grams of protein a day, and their average lifespan was well into the 80s. In fact, I think it was from memory, 84 for men, 88 for women. After 2000, these people started adopting more of a Western diet, in other words, more meat, dairy, and processed foods, and their longevity levels fell. So now they're number two on the list. Number one, that's the Seventh-day Adventists from Loma Linda in California, and the Loma Linda Seventh-day Adventists are primarily vegetarian and or vegan. So in other words, they don't eat meat and or they don't eat animal products of any form. So let's look at the next piece of research which ties in with that indirectly. So the New England Journal of Medicine, they had to say that the highest levels of contamination in the breast milk of the vegetarians was lower than the lowest level of contamination in non-vegetarian women. And that came from this study right here. So pollutants in breast milk of vegetarians. So mean vegetarian levels were only 1% to 2% as high as the average level in the USA. So even if you're a vegetarian, this is not even vegans. This is people who just cut out meat. So these people still eat eggs and or milk, depending on what type of vegetarian then that they are, if they're ovo-vegetarian or a lacto-ovo-vegetarian. But basically, they cut meat out, and they had significantly lower levels than the rest of the population. In fact, their levels were only 1% to 2% that of the rest of the population. Then when we look down here, nursing infants of vegetarian women whose diets are low on the food chain are exposed to less chemical pollution. What do we mean by low on the food chain? Well, let's go back here. If you eat only plants, that's the first level on the food chain. So let's look at it this way. There's the plant matter. Cows, chickens, pigs, they eat that plant matter. So they're a secondary level as in they're higher on the food chain, then we eat that animal. When we eat that animal's meat, we're eating the accumulated toxicity of their lifetime of exposure to these chemical pollutants. So in other words, they eat those chemicals, it builds up in their tissues, so anything their liver and kidneys can't excrete remains in the meat and fatty tissues of that animal. We eat it, which is why our level of exposure is higher. If we come back over here under the blue arrow, the blue magic arrow of health, it says if you eat it from its primary source, in other words, if you eat primarily plant-based, you're going to limit your exposure massively, which is why we can say things like the highest levels of contamination in the breast milk of the vegetarians was lower than the lowest level of contamination in non-vegetarian women. So I hope that gives you the answer you're looking for. So a brief synopsis recap answer to those questions. What are the most toxic chemicals we're exposed to in our diets? That would be dioxins and furans. What problems that can they cause? So besides cancer, they can also cause atherosclerosis, which was the plaque buildup inside our blood vessels. It can also cause high blood pressure. So those two on their own, heart disease, high blood pressure, stroke, they're the top killers in the Western world currently, as well as cancer. And then one of the, the diseases that's jumping up through the ranks is diabetes. Again, they're contributors to diabetes. And also one of the degenerative diseases that's going through the roof in the Western world is dementia. Again, all related to eating meat and animal products. So if you want to cut down your exposure to these chemicals and cut down your risk to these life-threatening and life-destroying diseases, drastically reduce your meat intake. That's what China is telling its citizens to drastically reduce the intake of their meat by at least 50%. This is what the Okinawans in Japan are doing, and this is what the 
Loma Linda, Seventh Day Adventists are doing, and their longevity levels reflect that. So that's the message for today, guys. If you found that useful, please do us a massive, massive favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel. What that does for you guys is the more people who subscribe, it pushes us up in the rankings on the YouTube algorithm. So when people search for health-related information, they're more likely to see our video first. And that just lets us get our message out to more people so that you and they can make better informed health decisions. Also, if you find a video that resonates with you, feel free to grab the link and email it to your friends, family, whoever you think you, that can benefit for it from it. Put it on your Facebook page, whatever. But also, if you see a video that resonates with you and that you like the content, please give it a thumbs up and give it a comment. And what that does is that just gives me the feedback to say, hey, you want more of this information and we'll research it and deliver it to you. So that's our first part of our message. Also, similarly, please give us a like on Facebook. All these links are in the description below, so please click on the link to our Facebook page. Give us a like and also, again, feel free to click on a link for any of the articles, any of the information, any of the research abstracts, memes, whatever else that you find on the Facebook page that you like. Feel free to take it, put it on your own page, send it to your friends in a private message, tag them in it. And again, the more likes we get on certain posts, we know you want more of that. And finally, guys, thank you again so much for your support and go and have an awesome day and we'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now.